I cloned the Dashata app and these are four things that I've learned doing that. So the first thing is that simple interactions are hard. The second thing is creating animation is not that intuitive. The third one is flex widgets are cool. And last but not least, the fourth one is extracting widgets are super important. So let's get started with the first one. So I have with me here the Dashita app and it looks pretty similar to what the normal Dashita app looks like. So the first thing that I want to talk about is this interaction. So for example, clicking on like designer, developer and manager. Every time you pick a class or you pick a role, you could see that there is this change of colors for your different attributes and your points as well. And then if you were to look closely, if I were to add, you could see that the minus sign actually lit up to the color. And if I go to the maximum of five, then my plus button is not interactable and it also changed to the gray color. So this is pretty not easy to do because you have to deal with a lot of this interaction. So I feel that it uses a lot of your mental power to really think about on how to make this interaction work. And then at the same time, you also want to reset as well so you can have the eight points. So to do these interactions, I have to use a change notifier as you can see over here. Then I have to create like the different rows and colors and then just putting as such and i guess um, you can look it up in the link in the description to see what i have done so far it's probably not the best but i feel like it's the easiest and readable i also put in some comments as well all right the next one let's go for animations is not intuitive so I was trying to create this animation over here where it just has a heartbeat pulse. It's under the pulsing text. And obviously, if you want to create an animation, you probably have to use stateful widget with the single ticker provider state mix in. So I literally forgot on how to create animation. So I only thought that you need an animation controller because you can do like duration, add status, listen and such. But I've come to realize that you also need to use a tween and then you probably have to use this animate method where you have to put in certain animation objects or you could say a curved animation. Flutter has created certain curves that you can use. So there is ease in back, you have ease out as well. And then you have to put in the text animation controller for the parent. So before that, I actually use the text animation controller because it has its own value that you can listen to. But you probably have to use the twin so that it can give you the value that it is rendering according from the beginning to the end. So every second it gives a certain value, right? And then simply you can just put it inside an animated builder and then inside this animation, it is using a listenable. So I'm using a text animation controller. And then for the widget that you're animating, you're going to use the text animation value instead, which I think it's a little bit like unintuitive because like most of the time in Flutter to create something, you have to use one thing like any UI stuff, even like for your text field, you only use a text controller or text editing controller if I'm not wrong. But for animations, you have to use two. Even though I've created a talk about it, I totally forgot. There are a couple things that you have to create animations and I know animations has a lot of things that's going on but I feel that it's still not intuitive as I want to be because it requires two separate things to create an animation. I assume that there's a lot of packages that helps you you know compile all of these flutter widgets and flutter components together so that it's easier for you to create animations right. I probably show a package on animation that helps you create animations pretty easily or there's like pre-built animations as well. So that was something that was struggling a lot when actually creating anim uh, when creating the dash attire which is animations. But I think if you are used to animations, then I think this is something that makes sense to you. So I guess uh, without any experience, so coming from a like a first timer in Flutter trying to create animation, this is really not very intuitive, but that's fine, right? So the next thing that I want to show is that all of these things, right? Like you can see on the left and the right over here is using flex widgets. So flex widgets are pretty cool. And why I say so is because using flex widgets such as your expanded or your flexible or your rows and columns in this single like whole thing, right? There's a lot of columns and rows that I use. So I have this thing called the console app bar. It uses a row simply, but at the bottom, you can see that I need to use another row. So this whole thing, this whole rectangular thing is actually using 
uh, column. And then inside this column, you also have this thing, this Dashata thing over here is actually uh, image PNG, right? So you have to use a column as well. So now I have to use a column inside a column. And then I think one thing that I want to point out, I want to show is actually this uh, attributes uh, section over here. So let me show you. So I call it the attributes section over here. And then you could see that I have like attributes using like uh, the change notifier. But one thing that's really cool is that for this select attribute section over here, there's actually a row for individual attributes. So you have your strength attribute and then you have your attribute button. However, how are you going to squeeze them to the point that this button does not change its size or width and then this strength can, you know, squeeze them as well. I'm using flex over here. So I need an equal space for my text widget to actually, you know, sit in. And at the same time, I want my buttons to also, you know, be uniform as well. So there was a UI problem that I had to solve. And then basically I used the expanded widget with the flex one and then I use the flexible widget with the flex one as well for my buttons. So what flexible does is that it tells the child widgets to be constrained to its own size so it doesn't expand and then at the same time if you were to override the flex over here so I don't have to put my own flex but I want to flex. So <laughs> basically it just takes up the space according to how many flexible widgets are so it's according to the ratio of spaces. So I have a list of class and I want to make them into like uh, buttons right over here. So what I can do is I can use the wrap widget what it does is basically it allows you to position the widget if it has a certain constrained space. So for example, now you could see one row of buttons, but if I were to constrain it to a smaller size like this, then you could see the third button or the manager button actually goes to the bottom. So I, I really like how this wrap widget is and it is also according to how the Dashata acts as well. So I really like how it is. So flexible widgets are something that I think it's really important if you want to have responsiveness in your Flutter project, whether it is a desktop or mobile app. So that's the third thing that I want to say. So the fourth thing that I want to talk about is extracting widgets. So extracting widgets is pretty important because like you could see from the Dashata app over here, it's very, very, there's a lot of widgets that I need to create. You know, it looks simple. Oh my God. There's a lot of widgets that I need to create. So for example, inside my main.dart, I actually have made as much extraction as possible. Abstraction, extraction. Is it the same? I have no idea. But basically, I have to create a lot of widgets. So I have like Dashata console, which is basically, you know, the, the Dashata console over here. And then inside this Dashata console, I've used this console body and console bar. So I have a console bar over here and the console body. And then the console body has its own like different stuff. And then you have your left section and right section. I really don't have a better name to do it, but it makes sense, you know, left section and right section. And then I have the left section over here and the left section. Oh my God, there's a lot of things that's going on. So I have the pulsing text and then the roll buttons. And then I have the attribute section over here. So you see the attribute section and then I have the, uh, I call it point stream. It's so straightforward. So I guess extracting widgets that has understandable names make sense, you know, like right and left section. I think that's good enough, honestly, because I didn't really want to spend a lot of time. I took uh, like five hours. That's usually how much time I take to create a video, edit it and, you know, try out the thing that I wanted to do to make into a video. But it took me five hours to code the whole thing out. I thought I could do it in a day, but this project's probably going to take me two days in terms of I haven't even make it mobile responsive. So you could see that, yeah, like it's not uh, mobile responsive at all. But I'm not going to do that because I have other things that I want to do. So I think this is a great attempt trying to clone a Dashata app in one day. I guess that's a worthy attempt, right? But coming back to the point is that obviously you really have to extract your widget as much as possible because there's a lot of things that you have to create in a simple Flutter project. Because sometimes, for example, use for flex widgets, there's a lot of like columns and rows that you have to do. A lot of columns and rows I have to do. And then 
I'll probably have to use some um, layout widgets like flexible as well. So in summary, simple interactions is pretty hard because there are certain things that the user experience expects. So that's why I guess just a little warning if you really want to make an app that is very good in terms of user experience. Second of all, uh, animations, I feel that it's not very intuitive. You have to like create two things to just create an animation, but definitely there are packages out there that can help you create animations easily. And then third is that flex widgets are pretty cool and I believe that you should use it as much as you can. Try not to hard code anything except for, you know, like text widgets and maybe the size of your buttons. And lastly, extracting widgets are something that you should do when you are coding, not at the end. I try to not do at the end, but like try to extract your widgets as much as possible because when you're coding, you definitely come across with a lot of bugs. Therefore, I feel that extracting your widgets is really important in terms of having it not say future proof, but having your future you reading or debugging your projects if you were to come across it. And it builds a very good habit if you were to, you know, work in a team because your teammates or your uh, fellow developers who are trying to read your code and wants to, you know, debug it, they might have a hard time actually finding the bug. So that's about it. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. I mean, if you want more of this kind of video, subscribe down below. Comment down if you want this Dashata app tutorial. So stay safe and all the best. Bye.